Hallelujah, Father. You are wonderful tonight. Father, you're glorious tonight. Hallelujah. Father, you're amazing. Father, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you tonight. Hallelujah. Father, you're wonderful. Father, you're wonderful. Father, you're wonderful. Father, I know there are other words that describe how you are. But, Father, I just want you to know tonight, Yahweh, Jehovah, you are truly wonderful tonight. You're glorious, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Father, you're worthy of all glory. Father, on this, on this night, on this night, Father, a little bit over 2,000 years ago, as, as your son Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. Hallelujah going through the, the the pictures in his mind of having to give his life for us. Hallelujah. Jesus, thank you for not turning back on us. Thank you. Hallelujah. With all the stress that you were under, with all the duration, all the, all the stress, all that pressure on you, you still love each one of us enough, hallelujah, to come to the consensus to give your life for us. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we, we do talk about the resurrection. We understand that. But the decision, Father, it's the decision. We're, Jesus, we're just grateful that you are able to come to the decision. Hallelujah. To give your life for ours. Hallelujah. How can we ever repay? We can't. We really can't. But we, we can accept you. We can love you. We can establish your kingdom on this earth by declaring that you alone are worthy. Father, nobody else on this earth gets your glory. 
Jesus, nobody, not one preacher, not one. I don't care what their titles are. I don't care how great their names are. They fail in comparison to you. You're still our chief priest, Jesus. You're still king of kings. You're Lord of lords. You have not lost any of your authority. Hallelujah. And then you're, you're so you're so unselfish in your authority, Father. And Jesus, that you you even give us you've given us the right to use your name to legislate in this in this earth realm on your behalf. Thank you for the trust. We will not we don't want to betray your trust, Jesus. We want to make sure as your citizens, as your fellow, as your fellow laborers, Father, that that we're actually doing the work that you assigned us to do. Hallelujah. And Father, we understand that the primary goal in this kingdom is to create new kingdom citizens. Hallelujah. Not about acquiring goods, not about establishing our own name, but Father, there are people who are dying, there are people who are hurting, who have no idea of their, their potential. Hallelujah. In the kingdom. So Father, whenever you give us the opportunity, let us not shy away. Let us not um, deter from telling people that Jesus is Lord. Telling people that Jesus loves them, that people telling people that not only did he die for them, but he raised, he's raised, he's risen. Hallelujah. And Father, that we're seated in heavenly places in him right now. Father, I don't care what things look like in this realm, the things that we can see. Father, in the unseen realm, just out of our sight range. Father, right out of outside of our sight spectrum that we can't detect, Father, the unseen realm is greater than what we see. And Father, thank you that you've given us authority in this realm to impact both realms, Father. So we thank you that you've enabled us, Father, to establish your kingdom. So, Father, yes, as we're preparing this week and, and, and this weekend to celebrate the resurrection, Father, I want to make sure that we meditate on this day. Hallelujah. The day when Jesus finally decides that, yes, Father. I will do your will. I will carry out your assignment. I will give up my life for yours. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you so much, our elder brother. Hallelujah. Thank you for your undying love for us, for your, your and even your patience with us, even after all you do. And, and we still, and we still, Still, hallelujah, Father. We sometimes we actually um, we don't go forward as we should. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. So Father, we just love you tonight. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are glorious. You are magnificent tonight. In the name of Jesus, thank you, God. Hallelujah to your name. We love you. We worship you. We adore you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father, that you never leave nor forsake us. Father, truly not by might, not by power, but by the spirit of the living God, your own spirit, Father. Thank you that all fear is flushed away. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love and a sound mind. And Father, we thank you that the weapons that the enemy tried to form against us, Father, those weapons are cast into the dry places. They are torn to pieces and those weapons will never form again against us in Jesus name. So, Father, we have one pur purpose on this earth that is to magnify you, to glorify you, to worship you. The one thing you can't give yourself, Father, is worship. So, Father, we take our positions and we gladly give you worship. That's what you're looking for. You're seeking true worshipers. And, Father, we present ourselves to you tonight as the true worshipers to worship you in spirit, to worship you in truth. And, Father, for all these wonderful kingdom citizens here tonight, Father, thank you for them. Father, thank you for restoring them. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, whatever their desires are, Father, they are manifesting right now. And Father, I know the desires of the co-laborers in this room, their desire is that your kingdom be established. And for all the people who are listening via radio, YouTube, 
whatever venue they, they decided. Thank you, first of all, for just giving us some of your time. Hallelujah. We don't take that lightly. You could be doing so many other things virtually, but thank you so much that um, you've given us these few moments. And while I have you, I just want to let you know that Jesus loves you tonight. Hallelujah. I know some of you may be feeling a certain way. Some of you may be dealing with situations. Some of you may be dealing with things that seem insurmountable. But I want you to know nothing is greater than God's love for you. So I'm speaking to those situations. I'm standing in agreement with you tonight. Whoever is listening and you're feeling overwhelmed right now in the name of Jesus, I speak peace into your heart, not on my own authority, but in the authority of the name of Jesus, I I command peace to be released into your heart right now. Hallelujah. Let you. I want you to see yourself and that you see yourself seated above that situation. Hallelujah. It's already working for your good. You've made it through it this far. Don't give it. Don't give up. Hallelujah. God has given you the grace and mercy to get this far through that situation, whether it's healing in your body, financial situations. Maybe you've lost a loved one just recently and you're trying to deal with it. Whatever the pressure is right now, I call you into your divine authority. Hallelujah. That you can speak, speak life into yourself. You can speak life back into your life, life back into your situation. And if you don't have the strength to do that right now, I stand in the, in the gap for you and I speak life into you. Hallelujah. I speak strength back into you right now. Hallelujah. I speak the presence and glory of the Holy Spirit, the deutimous power that will restore you right now. Hallelujah. I want you to know that it's already, not that it's going to be all right. It's okay right now in the name of Jesus. It's not futuristic. Hallelujah. God has already, before the foundation of the world, taken care of that situation. Hallelujah. Don't get weary. Hallelujah. It's okay to be hurt. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to even be emotionally drained, but don't get weary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your, your expected end is great in the name of Jesus, and it happens right now. So thank you, everyone who's listening. I'm praying for peace, restoration. Everything that has been stolen, the enemy has stolen, he has to restore sevenfold. And the years that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the canker worm have stolen, they come back to you tonight in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we love you. We adore you. We exalt you. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. And we give your name praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone tonight. You precious, wonderful kingdom citizens. I thank God for each one of you in the name of Jesus. You are truly, truly magnificent in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Are you going to drive for me, Freddie? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You should. You might be able. You still might be able to sit over there. For you, you, you might not even have to move. Hallelujah. Is it moving? Good deal. All right. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory and honor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have to turn this down. That's a distraction. It makes you just want to keep worshiping God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just keeps you, makes you want to worship him. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Salvation, glory, and honor to the Lord our God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll just let it go a little bit in the background. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you and we adore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can do our kingdom citizen declarations tonight in Jesus' name. This is our victory. This is how we win in the name of Jesus Christ. These Each one of these statements, they establish who you are in God's kingdom. So number one tonight, I have become a citizen of the kingdom of God by accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 9, and 10. Good, sir. Is it going? Not moving? Oh, that might be me. I, I moved the mouse on that's, that. That was me. That's all right. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Did you do that? Okay, good. All right. 
<laughs> Number two, as a kingdom citizen, I have been translated out of the failing system of the kingdom of darkness into God's victorious kingdom of his son. Colossians 1 and 13. As a kingdom citizen, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who dwells in me and gives me strength. Philippians 4 and 13. As a kingdom citizen, I now have the authority when I speak to cause things to be bound and loose, both in heaven and in earth. Matthew 18 and 18. Hallelujah. Wait one second. Got to get the people caught up with me. Okay, number five, as a kingdom citizen, I'm seated high above and dominate all principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named because I am seated in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1 and 21. As a kingdom citizen, I have the authority to make declarations and see them manifest quickly because of my ability to use the name and authority of Jesus Christ, John 14, 12 through 14. As a kingdom citizen, all things are possible to me if I only believe because God, the creator and ruler of the kingdom, has promised to exceed and above whatever I can think or ask. Ephesians 3, 20 through 21. Hallelujah. To God be the glory in the name of Jesus. We can do all things through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Young brother, could you come up for a second, man? I tell you, there's just a, there's a great presence on you brother it's just a there's an anointing on your life man i just don't even know i just want to sow a seed into your life brother just appreciate you man god yeah you yeah this is you something just writing you man god bless you thank you thank you for coming out tonight yeah so i just want to be obedient brother just want to be obedient you yeah your 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 greatness was pulling on me in the name of jesus hallelujah so i have to be obedient so i can move glory to god Hallelujah. Don't tell me our young men aren't valuable. Hallelujah. Don't tell me our young men don't have purpose and vision. Hallelujah. No, no, I can. There's, there's greatness in you, brother, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just get this other PowerPoint put up here. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you tonight. Father, we give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. Father, we exalt you tonight. Father, we worship you tonight. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Yes, you are wonderful. Yes, you are wonderful. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. So we're still talking about Wow. So amazing. <laughs> Last year, this time, we were still talking about kingdom citizenship and being a kingdom witness. And here we are a whole year later. Hallelujah. That's why that's why I love about God's word is you can't rush through it. And I don't care how much we think we know about the word of God in the name of Jesus. There's always more in the name of Jesus. Uh, when I started, when when uh when I first became the, the, you know, the, you know, the pastor here, um, you know, I have been doing this for, for a few years. I mean, I, you know, not just not as the head pastor, but, you know, I have been doing, um, you know, ministry as, you know, or whatever for a minute. And, you know, um, I think God laughed at me because I said, God, whatever, what else is it to teach? He said, son, <laughs> he said, he said, that's the last thing you need to be concerned about. Cause he said, I can, you can teach some, 23 and one and never go anywhere else. You can teach that for 52 weeks out of the year. Hallelujah. So much revelation in God's word. Hallelujah. And you know, that's why, I, you know, the times when I let people, uh, when God is instructing people not to get up for one Sunday, but to get up for multiple Sundays, because you can do it once <laughs> and you're good. But by the third Sunday, you're like, I don't have anything else to say. You no. Know? Yeah. As long as you got a verse, as long as the word exists, there will always be something to say. Hallelujah. God's word is infinite. It changes. 
um, is, is part of quantum physics. Now, what quantum physics is, is this. Whatever you're seeing, whatever we see, I'm looking at that wall, but sight extends beyond that wall. My, my, my eyesight, my natural eyesight can't see it, but sight goes beyond what I can see. And so what happens is we, we're existing in all these different um, um, sections of creation. And so the word applies to everything that we see and don't see. So whenever you feel like, you know, you know, I don't know what else I can teach. I don't know what else I can say, man. Just go back to any scripture. Just read it. And there's a revelation, not for that, just for that given time. So the word is dynamic. It, it's the same word, but it applies to situations as you go through them. Hallelujah. So when you say the Lord is my shepherd and you're you're in debt, he, that, that supplies all your need. And when you say the Lord is my shepherd and you're, and you're going through sickness, you say, hey, Lord, you've already supplied my healing. And when you're in when you're going through situations and you feel alone, like nobody lo loves you, you say the Lord is my shepherd. Father, you will never leave or forsake me. Three sermons. <laughs> three sermons one scripture the lord is my shepherd i shall not want so um i don't know who i'm talking to but some of you who might be doing ministry and you get up some mornings or you're going through the week and it's like god i, I need something deep no you don't you just need to say god what scripture do i need to focus on and that scripture by the time you get here sunday what happens is that scripture is already applying itself to everybody who walks in hallelujah so you never run out of stuff. I promise you. I promise you. New new ministers, new leaders. Um, I just I don't even know why I'm talking this way. Maybe somebody is listening. You know, you might be getting to the point like I don't know what else to give my people. You give. First of all, they're not your people. And the second thing, you can teach the same thing over and over. Hallelujah. Teach faith. Teach healing. Teach those basics. Hallelujah. And God will turn the basics into things that people think they, they like. I've never heard that before in Jesus name. So the reason I'm saying that we've been teaching on on witnessing just almost almost a, a year and a half now. Hallelujah. That's how much is in the Bible on just that one topic. And it's so great to be here on the precipice of the resurrection. And we're talking about this subject. Hallelujah. Being a kingdom witness. That's that's how, that's what our core is. I don't care where else we do in church. It's not about church numbers. It's not about anything else. Jesus gave one commission that we can hang our hat on there's one commission there's one assignment that came out of jesus himself that's not interpretation it is exactly what he said he said go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and son and the holy spirit everybody has an assignment that assignment is to take the gospel and give it to somebody else that's our assignment so we're always witnessing in your mind you don't stop going to the different um you know the different uh like ministers elders and all of that that stuff is all it's okay but your first goal always should be this father give me somebody that i can give the gospel to because everybody that's born again is ordained to carry the gospel of jesus christ hallelujah and it flows right into what dr miles monroe says right here and he said, what is our purpose? It is to spread the knowledge and influence of the kingdom of heaven over all the earth. And what, and by and large, what we've done as pastors all of these years, we've tried to come up with things to impress people. Like, you know, we, we got to come up with something dynamic. What's something new? What's something that's going to get the people excited? Well, you really, and what that turns into is being egotistical. That means I want people to be excited because I'm a great teacher. I want people to be excited because, wow, you know, uh, Pastor Miles, he's so smart. He knows all this stuff. No. If I'm only in here and I never, ever talk to anyone outside of those doors, I'm ineffective. I don't care. I don't care how many people are in here. If I'm so focused in here that I stop being concerned about the person who doesn't know Jesus, I'm ineffective. Our first core, no matter what we're doing in church, I don't care what goes on in here, our core has to be hung on this. We have to tell someone about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's it. 
That's why we're on the radio. That's why we're, you know, I thank um, God for Sister Ann who's up. You know, she's um, over at the radio station so we can be up. Thank God that he's given us all these avenues. Because all of this is worth, if one person tonight says, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, it's worth all the lights in this church, the chairs, the radio waves, the internet. All of that is worth one soul that would say, hey, I need to know Jesus is Lord. That's the influence. The influence is to make sure everything that's created should be directed to telling somebody else about the gospel. Yeah, your car, your house, everything you own, your attitude will be, Father, let it be used to bring someone into the kingdom of God. Yeah. Not so people can say, I have a nice house or a nice car. It's okay to enjoy that stuff, but at base, we should be, Father, let me be able to use this to bring somebody into the kingdom. It could be a ride in a nice car that might bring somebody. It could be you in inviting someone who doesn't even know Jesus into your house to give them a meal and, and they are comfortable and you can talk to them about Jesus. Everything you do, even how you dress, dress nicely. So somebody can say, hey, you know what? You dress nice. And you can say, man, thank God that Jesus provided. See, everything that people, when a person has a conversation with you, your mind doesn't need to, it needs to go to, Father, what, how can I give them you? This might be the only time I get to talk to them. I don't care why they're going, coming to me, but my, my attitude needs to be this. Jesus, what is something I can say to them right now that will sow a seed into their life? That is the kingdom. That is the gospel of the kingdom. It should be and has to be, what can I do with all this, the resources and power that God has given me? What can I do to tell someone about the gospel of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. And our next, um, our next, the very next thing on here is not moving. I have to remember when I do something on, on this machine that it's moving. It's all right. We'll get it. Yeah, I forgot I'm moving the mouse. Thank God for technology. Try it now. All right, good deal. All right, Matthew 24 and 14. And it says, this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world for witness into all nations. And then the end, and then shall the end come. So the gospel of the kingdom means the good news of the kingdom. That's it. And, and, you know, we always want to make sure that when I'm saying kingdom, when I'm saying that, because he said, well, Russ, you know, you keep saying this word kingdom, you know, the gospel of the kingdom. What are you talking about? Why, what, what is really this kingdom? So what, what the kingdom is, when I'm referring to it, is literally the kingdom of God. Now, everything that's created is in his kingdom. And God is the ruler of every kingdom. That's what I, one of my base scriptures, the reason I teach is um, uh, uh, Revelations eleven seventeen. I think I'm quoting it right. I hope so. I might have to make sure I get it. But it says the kingdoms of this world have become kingdoms of our God. That means that God's kingdom is the dominant kingdom. That means he is ruler of everything that's created. OK, so his kingdom, God is in supreme authority of all of creation. OK, so and what that means is his kingdom directs in God's everything. That's it. That's the dominant kingdom. That's in, in his kingdom. There's healing in his kingdom. There's provision and there in his kingdom. There's righteousness and his kingdom is every good thing that needs to happen. OK, so that's the kingdom. Now, because of the fall of man, there's the kingdom of darkness that developed and that kingdom of darkness came from. When the angels fail, they talk, you know, Lucifer has a conversation with Adam and Eve. They fall. And then what happens is that darkness permeates light. So the, this earth was good. It's created in God's kingdom. So God says, listen, I'm, I'm ruling everything, but I'm creating a this, this blue ball that you can lay, that I'm putting you on that you could control. So this earth was literally, when it was created, it was part of God's kingdom. There was no difference. Kingdom of darkness comes in, fall comes in, and then it separates because God can't deal with sin. So that's why he separates. He separated from mankind because God's like, I can't deal with sin. So what happens is for a while, the kingdom of darkness was was keeping us separated from the kingdom that we were created, created in. So God really didn't have complete rulership over mankind. 
he lost that rulership. So he, but he worked through people to get Jesus here. So what happens is all these generations go by. And so, and Jesus comes and when Jesus comes, he comes to establish us back into the original system. The original system is that this earth is literally connects back to God and we become a part of God's kingdom. So when Jesus died, we, you know, we're going to hear about those stories and, you know, people that preach it. Pre Jesus dies. When he dies, what happens is when he dies, he goes to hell. He comes back. When he goes to hell, he takes the power of darkness of the kingdom of darkness. He takes all the power back. So when he takes the power of, of the kingdom of darkness and he takes authority back, then that gives us the right again to be a part of God's kingdom. So when we say, you know, you're part of the kingdom, that means when you accept Jesus, you shift back into the kingdom where God is ruling. OK, he's directing. But on the earth here, he says, what I'm going to do is. I'm not, I don't want to rule on the earth. I want you to, I, I will use your influence and I will work through you so that you can remain the dominant man on this earth. God never wants dominion. He never wanted dominion on the earth. That was never his job. He never wanted to do that. He wanted man to do that. So what happens is when, when Jesus died, he's resurrected. We say, Jesus, come into my life. What, what that allows God to do, God is like, good, now I have a vessel that I can use in order to establish my kingdom back on the earth. That's what this is right here. When you get saved, that, that gives God another vessel to work through because God can't do anything. God, Literally, believe it or not, God can't do anything on this earth because that will make him a liar because he says, I'm giving you dominion. All right. So that's, you know, either God can do everything, but God can't lie. <laughs> so God will not he will not go against his word. He 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 cut a covenant with mankind. He says, I have given you dominion. You won't know how that's true. Let me ask you something. Why at the fall didn't God just come in, come in here and make it right? He could have done that. God could have came in instantly and said, you know what? I'm going to wipe this thing out and I'll start over. You know why he couldn't do it? Because he had already made a promise. He says, I'm giving you dominion on this earth and I will never take it back. So all those generations, Moses, all the great men of God, Genesis, all the stories that we read in Egypt, all of that stuff. God was using man. Hallelujah. Because he could not come back on this earth and do it himself. He was about he was about to with Moses. He told Moses, Moses, I will wipe this people out and start over. Moses reminded him of the covenant. He said, God, you can't do that because then people will think you're like Baal. They'll think you're just a lying God. God says, I repent, Moses. Okay, let me stick with the plan. And then when, so when Jesus comes, he dies. He's resurrected. He transfers the ability for us to accept him. And it's his blood in us that connects us back to the kingdom of God. So when you get saved, you're not only a citizen here. That's why I call you kingdom citizens. That means you're no longer just a citizen of this earth. That means you're a citizen of the very kingdom of God himself. Okay. So I just want to give you, because I, I know you hear me say kingdom all the time. And sometimes they can be like, well, Russ, what is that kingdom? I don't understand. What are you talking about? And, and it's synonymous. You'll hear the kingdom of heaven and you'll hear the kingdom of God. They're both the same thing. OK. And right now, when you get saved, you are a part of God's kingdom. That means you rule over everything that happens on this earth in Jesus name. So I just want to let you know. So when we say the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all the nations, then the end shall come. We got to let the world know there's a kingdom that you don't see that's greater than what you see. And when you're a part of that kingdom, you are actually a part of God's family. That means you are an heir to this world, that you have control over your life. Hallelujah. You have control over situations that the devil is trying to come in and do. The devil should never be able to do anything because we have authority. Don't say the devil is. No, the devil can't do anything. He's using our words. I got to keep, and I keep saying that as long as I can say it. The devil can't do anything. He uses the words of man to do stuff. So we got to watch our words. Kingdom citizens, you use your words succinctly, directly, because if you say the wrong thing, the enemy will take our own words and use them against us. Come on, man. Watch our words. Our words have so much authority. 
and the kingdom of darkness is defeated. So the only thing they can do is rely on the things that we say or don't say. If you don't know what to say, I'm going to tell you, if you don't know what to say, you know, either say scripture or don't say anything. Don't speak out of your emotions. Your emotions will give the devil too much influence. Because when you start saying, I hate this, I don't like this, you know what? I'm tired of messing with these people. These people are getting on my nerves. That gives the enemy the power to operate. So we got to be real careful, especially when we get emotional, when we get in our feelings, that we don't turn authority over to the enemy. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus, whenever, I love the example, when Jesus, when they brought that woman in sin, Jesus did not speak instantly. He looked at the ground, he thought about it, and when he looked up, God had downloaded in him just what he should say. Hallelujah. Jesus was never pressured into saying anything. So don't, when, when you feel pressure to say stuff or you're in your emotions, sometimes just be quiet until you get a download like, God, what do I need to say next? Because I don't want to say anything that's going to hurt myself or hurt others in the name of Jesus. That's how powerful you are in this kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. All right. So I um, didn't intend to in teach a kingdom lesson, but I need I want you to make sure you know what kingdom you're operating in and what the kingdom is in Jesus name. And this is our formula that we've been using. This is how um, we get this world into the um, the kingdom of darkness. This is how we take people out of that kingdom and put them into the kingdom of God is um, uh Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 3 and 6, I planted, Apollo swore it, but God gave the increase. So we don't save people, okay? You're, you're not going out and saving people. <laughs> you can't. It's impossible. There's impossible for us to save anybody. Jesus didn't say, he didn't say go keep, get people saved. He said go tell them about the good news of the gospel. Yeah. What's up, Pastor? Yeah. Do you know nobody sells you a car? They present it to you? But they can't sell you the car. You made the decision to buy it. Isn't that amazing? You know, you hear car salesmen, they can't sell that car. They can tell you the benefits of it, but they can't make you spend the money. It's the same way with Jesus. Don't worry about if people are going to accept him. Tell them who Jesus is. We get so concerned. Well, they don't want to hear about Jesus. How do you know? Because they always say they tell Jesus stuff. No, they're tired of hearing that Jesus will hurt you, kill you. That Jesus is mean, God is mean. They've been hearing the wrong stuff. Just say Jesus loves you. Tell them the good news of the Gospels. The world has heard so bad, much bad news and put it on God that people have gotten to the point I don't want to hear about. This God that's killing my, my family and God just took my mom and my daddy and oh, this God that he's letting the rapist live and he'll take somebody like my, my son or my daughter. No, I don't want to hear that, that God is mean. We got to present a God that loves people. We got to present Jesus. We got to present the Holy Spirit because if we don't, they never get the right picture of who Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are. Hallelujah. Yeah, because have you ever brought a car and paid more than you expected because the people told you the benefits? You knew that this was your price limit. And they said, you know what? Hey, just for $5,000 extra, you can get this feature. God is like, don't you? You don't even need that feature. You won't even use it. But God is the onboard GPS. But by next year, they'll create new roads and it won't be worth what you paid for it. Do you know GPS, time they opened up a new road, that GPS is outdated? But then you pay $5,000 because it's going, you know, it's like, well, it's the GPS. And hold it. It's okay if you wanted that future. But if God says just use, the, use a basic GPS, use your phone, don't pay $5,000. And God forbid if the GPS goes bad, then they got to take the whole front panel off. And it's out of warranty. Oh. Be like, God, how can, I told you, God, like, I told you not to get it. Sometimes God probably just like a parent. I told you. The salesman didn't make you buy it. He sold you a benefit. This is it. Give people the benefits of Jesus. So let them decide. Because then the Holy Spirit will help that sale. Hallelujah. Because everybody that's here, hallelujah. I got to get to the lesson. I got to. But let me tell you something. God gave me this revelation, and it totally... Um, it changed the way that I thought about 
what's in us when we get to this earth because uh, we're here to measure faith. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. When I hear the measure of faith, I always thought that there was this little faith that was in us that connects. God says, Russ, do you know me? I measured the world in my hand, son. My measure is not a thimble. I send you here full of faith. It's not just some little infinitesimal something. He says, no, you are born with all this faith. Because to know me, you, it, 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 it takes more than a thimble. You come and your, your whole spirit is clawing to get to me. Because you're full of who I am when you get here. All I need you to do is seed it. I need you to seed that faith. Do you know how much power is in dirt? There's enough power in dirt to go trees, apple, oranges. Same dirt can grow anything, but you have to activate it with a seed. Same dirt. The dirt doesn't care. It says, you give me a seed, I got the stuff that'll grow it. So you come here full of faith. Every baby, don't look at the baby, so they got a little bit of faith. No, they got more faith than we got, but we, they have to come into the knowledge. And when they hear, when when faith hears Jesus, oh, it's like an, it's like an electric bolt that goes through your, your spirit because all that faith activates every time you hear the name of Jesus. So the next time you hear measure of faith, don't think it's some little mustard seed. No, you, people come here full of who God is. That's why I say babies can't talk. <laughs> I believe if babies could talk, they would just tell us too much stuff because they came directly from heaven. The first thing they were talking about is like, yeah, you know, I saw Jesus, I saw God, and they were doing all this stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, God is real. I just, I just saw him. I just left him. By the time they can talk, they, you know, it's like they've gotten far enough away from it. Babies dream about heaven, man, because that's where they came from. So we, you, everybody on this earth is walking around full of faith, but it hadn't been activated. Let's activate it. Tell people about Jesus. Tell people about Jesus. Activate so the measure. So when you think measure, don't think thimble. Think about God measured the universe with his own hands. That's the kind of faith that we come here with. And you know how it operates? Because people who are not even, even say say this. You know what? I'm getting ready to do this, and it happens. How can we speak stuff not even saving and it still happens? Hmm. Because faith works. Faith works. When you speak, Jesus says all things are possible if you believe, not if you're saved. He didn't say salvation. He said all things are possible if you believe. That's why God had to shut down the Tower of Babel. They were getting ready to, they were, they were getting ready to build through time is what they were getting ready to do. God says, I got to stop them because they don't doubt. I can't stop them because there's no power greater than what they have. They have the ability to believe. There's nothing that's bigger than the power of belief. Hallelujah. And every human being has it. We just got to get them to believe the right way in Jesus' name. That's why we witness. Glory to God. So let's get to a point. Hallelujah. As, um, as kingdom witnesses, we must be careful that when God reveals the truth of who Jesus is by his spirit, that we do not drift back into our traditions. Which means sometimes we have to remove ourselves from the traditional setting and teaching we were used to practicing. It's easy to drift back in tradition because it sounds good. He might not come when you want him, but ow! And we going off. As kingdom citizens, that should make your flesh crawl. He might not come when you want him, but he'll show up right on time. God knows your heart. He knows you're going through something, but he's trying to teach you something in this situation. Don't drift back into tradition. I, I don't, you can, I tell people, you can visit any church you want to, any Sunday you want to, as many times as you want to. But when you visit and they're not teaching kingdom, you better leave quickly because that stuff feels good to your flesh. Tradition feels good because it put everything on God. God will fix it. God will do it. Just wait on God. 
Won't he do it? <laughs> it's not on God. It's on us. We are the citizens, not God. God is, he has already delegated authority to us. We got to get out of the mindset, God is going to do something. He's already done it, church. He's Alpha and Omega. He finished it at the beginning. We just, Bishop says this, we just, we just living out the middle. And we control what's happening in the middle. Stop waiting on God. We, we spend years waiting the wait is over <laughs> hallelujah so let's look at this galatians 1 and 13 he says i have heard of my earlier career you have heard of my earlier career i'm this is galatians 1 and 13 in the amplified says you have heard of my earlier career and former manner of life in the jewish religion judaism how i persecuted and abused the church of god furiously and extensively and with fanatical zeal did my best to make habit of it and destroy it because of my traditions, because I didn't know better. I was killing the people I'm talking to. I was, for, I was determined to kill this thing that Jesus started because he was trying to open this up to the world, something that's intended for the Jews. I thought that the world should not have it. So when these, these other countries and these other people started to talk about that Yahweh was their God, I couldn't stand it. I wanted to kill them all. I was a fanatic. The best people that you can get in the kingdom are fanatics. Because when they turn kingdom, it's over. Can you imagine if the blood and the crypts got saved? Everybody would just get saved. They'd be like, you want to know Jesus? Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So you better learn, you better get Jesus. Because they are, they, they, they are so committed to what they're doing. If you change them, they they are some of the greatest warriors on this earth. Because this is it. They will literally die for Jesus. Because in their mind, they don't have a fear of death. They like, you know, whatever. whatever I'm, you don't know who's looking. Whoever in, whoever out. Whatever they say. So they believe that the only reason you can get out of something is you have to die out. Can you believe? Can you imagine? They get like, when I get saved, nothing is going to take me away from Jesus. The greatest people that you can talk to are fanatics. People who are so much in love with a, a passion. Hallelujah. Bishop said this in the class, and I want you to ask yourself, what are you passionate about? What's your passion? What drives you through the day? That if you don't have anything driving you through the day, you don't have passion. So you're, you're just trying to live until you go back to bed tonight. You got to have, you got to be passionate, whether it's passionate about your family, passionate about your children, passionate about the kingdom. There has to be something that when you get up in the morning that it drives you. Hallelujah. If we stay lackadaisical, if we don't really care what happens, then we are drifting literally like without a sail and we're being tossed to and fro by every situation. Your purpose, your passion, it, it drives you. It drives you. Um, Galatians 1 and 14. And you have heard how I outstripped many of the men of my own generation among the people of my race. My advancement in study and observance of the laws of Judaism. So extremely enthusiastic and zealous I was for the traditions of my ancestors. He said, I knew this better than anybody. Some people don't know the kingdom, but they know church. <laughs> they can tell you what's supposed to happen on third Sunday, fourth Sunday. You know, the big people meeting, the little people meeting. Everything about church, they know church, but they, 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 they are so, um, and, and, you know, I know when you hear stuff, it just comes in. Bishop is talking about organizational church. The church has been so organizational that the organization is outweighing the kingdom. Who's the elder? Who's the usher? It don't matter. Guess what? People can sit somewhere even if you don't show them where to sit. If you just let them walk in, they'll sit down, I promise you. But you know what we're concerned about? I love you, Court. 
You know what we concerned about? But suppose they go over here where the elders are sitting. So what? Please don't run somebody down if they come over here and sit. Like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You know, those are for the elders and the shut up. Let them sit where a chair is a chair. Don't we <laughs> that's it, Mike. They can sit right here. We did that when I when I put Steve in that chair, he was like, Oh my god, yeah. We know church so well and have no idea about the kingdom. We teach in church protocol. We're teaching this is how you do this in the church. And why aren't you teaching people how to be victorious? Because they leave out of here defeated. Because we didn't give them anything to live on. And they leave out of here jealous because we've given so much um, esteem to people in positions. Come on, man. Let's shift this focus. Let's shift this focus. It's the focus has to be on Jesus, not the church and church tradition. Galatians 1 and 15. But when he, <laughs> Paul says but in Galatians 1 15, but when he who had chosen and set me apart even before I was born and called me by his grace, his undeserved favor and blessing. He saw fit and was pleased. Each one of you are designed to be world changers. Nobody in this room is greater than another person. Nobody. Everybody in here, your purpose will change the world literally. And this is it. The way you see things are different from every other, every, um, every other person. You know the thing that church does that's dangerous? Never try to get everybody to see everything the same way. Because normally, if I'm preaching, I want you to see things my way. That's dangerous. Because we're not cut the same. All right. Suppose... Suppose, you know, suppose Mother Denise, you know how she likes color and all of that? Suppose I came in here, or oh, Minister Denise, and I told her, well, we don't want a whole bunch of colors in here, Minister. I don't, I don't think, you know, you're always seeing all those colors. I, I, you know, I don't know if that's a good thing. And God sent her here because of that. Suppose, suppose that we, you know, I tell the praise team, you know, all that, all that other stuff y'all singing, you know, it, it's too something. We need something a little bit more different because that doesn't appeal to who I am. The church is not catering to the past. It caters to the people. The Holy Spirit knows the sound. He knows the gifts. Everybody that's here, you are essential to his kingdom, not this church. I don't need you to be essential to freedom. I need you to be essential to the kingdom. Well, we want the best church. No, I want the best kingdom. I care about this church. I mean, I care about the church. But this building, this, this edifice, no. Your power is too great for a building. Your purpose is too great for a building. This building can't contain who you are. I'm just trying to see change your thinking so you'll know the power that you have to change this entire planet. Think about this, y'all. We're getting ready. We're talking about Jesus' resurrection over 2,000 years later. One brother. One brother. Suppose Jesus, I can't do that, Father. I can't change the world. I can't change all these people's thinking. Suppose he had low self-esteem and says, Father, that task is too great for me. How am I supposed to change the world, Father? But his concern was not changing the world. His concern was, Father, I want to hear from you. If you from, hear from him, don't worry about it. You will change the world. If you hear from him, he will speak to your purpose and you will change things around you. You won't even have to try. Yeah. Y'all keep, you know, I, I, I'm just picking on you, Minister Denise. I know you're like, why I keep picking on you? Because she showed me this picture. She wrote me and she said, hey, hey, Pastor, you know, I got this thing, big poster, whatever. I'm like, hey, man, if you're seeing it, let's do it. I didn't even know it was that big and beautiful. 
because it looks like this on the screen. When she unfolded it, I'm like, oh my God. My eyes, when you walk in, it goes directly to this. And suppose I had to tell her, well, we, we don't really put stuff on the wall because the wall is holy. Oh, yeah. It's great to have people in here who are kingdom citizens. Listen, that's why when y'all talk to me, sometimes y'all don't even give it out of your mouth. I'm like, yeah, do it. I've done all of y'all like that. All right. Hey, Russ, like what? Y'all, okay, then, well, just tell me if you got to tell me, but I trust you. It ain't going to kill us. <laughs> so what? Let's go for it. Your change might bring somebody else into the kingdom. Come on, man. We, we can't be egotistical in this stuff. So let's keep going. Hallelujah. I'm going to get to the end of this, at least the end of this point. He saw it fit to, re uh, in Galatians 1.16, to reveal, unveil, disclose his son within me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, the non-Jewish world, as the glad tidings, as the gospel. Hold it. Immediately, <laughs> I did not confer with flesh and blood. I did not consult or counsel with any frail human being or communicate with anyone. You know what he's saying? Because if I had to go on back and talk to the Jews, they would have told me I was crazy. They would have said, that's the devil, Paul. You don't do that. So when when he was on, when he got hit, when the Holy, when God, when Jesus showed up with him, and we know this, he, he went blind and he had to step back from everybody. And to Ananias, until God told Ananias, you need to go talk to Paul. Ananias said, he killed people. <laughs> you want me to go talk to that nut? He, he hates Christians. But God had to separate him so that he could move him into his destiny. Let me tell you something. You know, when God gives you a purpose or whatever, if he doesn't tell you to tell anybody, keep it. Keep it. We get so excited. But God, God told me, God said that I got the apostolic anointing. Did he tell you to tell anybody? Jesus at 12 years old could have did what he did at 30. For he said, God said, wait, son. I got other people that is going to be attached to your life and I need you to go ahead and be subject to your parents because this is not the, this is not the, the time for you to start your ministry. So Jesus has to step back for 18 years knowing who he was, learning who he was, and he couldn't tell nobody. We have a dream and we like, oh, God, show me in a dream that I'm supposed to whatever. Did he tell you? To, if God didn't tell you to release stuff, keep it. Keep it. Because Mike come to me and say, hey, hey, Russ, you know, God said I'm an apostle. Oh, then I'm like, oh, Mike going to try to outrank me. Hmm. If I'm not an apostle, Mike can't be an apostle. And then I'm looking crossways at Mike. Look at Mike. He just probably waiting to see how he can get me up, up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, now he's an apostle. Oh, oh, so now I guess I'm supposed to. You see how that goes? Some You are bringing turmoil on yourself sometimes because you're releasing stuff to people who don't need to be released to. Always ask. God, now is this, and y'all see me up here talking. Sometimes God will hit me with stuff, and I'll stop for a second. That way, God, are you correcting me? Are you telling me something, or is this something that I need to release? So that's sometimes why y'all see me go like, ah, oh, God, am I supposed to say that? Because I'm like, wait a minute, God, that could be personal correction. Or this is, not, is this something I'm supposed to re be releasing right now? I don't do that because I'm trying to decide. I just need to know because if I unleash something at the wrong time and it's not supposed to be that time, it could be doing more damage than good. So Paul says, I didn't, I didn't go try to find the other, I didn't go try to find the scribes, the Pharisees, and he could have. He said, I kept it to myself in the name of Jesus. I got about five more minutes. We can go ahead. 
oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yep, yeah, good. I'm like, okay. And number two, I think we can get through this. We're okay. If Andy, give me about 15, uh, about 10 more minutes after eight, Sister Ann. Thank you so much. Uh, as kingdom witnesses, we must let the world know that because Abraham believed in God's promise to justify the world through Jesus Christ, we are also now able to become sons and daughters of God through our belief in Jesus Christ, which also makes us righteous when we confess him as Lord. Y'all, that's what we're celebrating this weekend. Abraham is the key to this. Because God cut covenant with Abraham. Because Jesus did never want any intention. He says, listen now, I'm just a fulfillment of the promise to Abraham. So that so my sacrifice is coming from Abraham's sacrifice. If there was no Isaac, there would be no Jesus. Do you realize that? If Abraham had told God, I ain't going to sacrifice my son for you, we would have never got Jesus. God needed a person that he could cut covenant with to get his son here. Now, I want to tell this about yourselves. This is why you got to know that you're vital. Abraham had no clue at 80 or 90 years old that God was going to change the course of this entire of his entire kingdom on him. That means you don't know what the great is in you. I may look, I might be looking in the person in this room who changed the whole course of the kingdom. I'm teaching it, but guess what? I'm teaching it, but there could be something that activates in you, and man, you can just change everything. So that's why I, be I try to tell you, don't discount yourself. Abraham didn't know this. Abraham was thinking about giving his stuff to somebody else. Like, I don't have a son. I don't have an heir. God, I don't. So I got all this stuff, but I don't have anybody to get to. He says somebody else's son might get all of this. God says, no, it's going to be your son. I'm going to give you and Sarah a son. Son grows up. He, he, he's, and then he comes to Abraham one day and says, I need you to kill him for me. I need you to get rid of Isaac. I just need, I need you to do, I just need a sacrifice from you. Will you sacrifice your son? So Abraham says, I freely give my son to you, father. You gave him to me, I give him back. And then Isaac is critical. We don't talk about this because Isaac had to be willing to sacrifice his life. Isaac ain't no baby. He's a he's bigger than his daddy. His daddy 90, so he can't fight. <laughs> Do you understand that, right? Your daddy 90, if you 15, 16, 20 years old, you can say, I ain't going to you. I'm going with you to sacrifice me. But then he says this, God will provide the sacrifice, son. Let's go. So he had he he puts the wood on. He does all this. Now his son is building his own altar to be laid down on. And his son lays down on this wood. And Abraham doesn't hesitate. Like, yeah. He's like, God, you have shown me how big you are. And when his hand goes up, God says, that's the one. Now. Abraham, now you have just become a father of many nations because now I will give my son because you're the only person on this earth I have covenant with you and you have kept your part of the covenant. Now I keep mine. That's why these crosses are on the wall right now. Abraham and Isaac. And don't discount Isaac. Sometimes we don't even talk about Isaac like that. We just say, no, if it wasn't for Isaac, if it wasn't for Isaac, Jesus wouldn't come. If he could, if Isaac hadn't laid down on that pile of wood to be sacrificed, Jesus doesn't make it. So thank you, Isaac. Isaac was critical in this plan because if he didn't lay down his life, Jesus doesn't lay down his. Thank God. So, and we know this story. This one, you know, we know this well. Hallelujah. It comes from, it comes from Genesis, um, Galatians 3 and 7. It says, so understand that, um, so understand that it is the people who live by faith with confidence in the power and goodness of God who are the true sons of Abraham. If we're not Abraham's seed, we don't get to inherit the promise. The promise is through Abraham, not Jesus. Do you know Jesus doesn't tie us to the covenant? Abraham ties us to the covenant. 
We think, thank you, Jesus. Jesus is like, no, it's not me. It's Abraham. Abraham is the one that you're connected to. The blessing is on Abraham, not on Jesus. Jesus is, you know what Jesus literally is? He's the door. He's the door to Abraham. It, he makes us Abraham's seed. So the blessing is on Abraham. So now we inherit Abraham's blessing through Jesus Christ. But then Jesus adds another element that even Abraham couldn't add. Now, Jesus, only he not only takes us back to the natural blessing of Abraham, he, get, he takes us all the way back to the dominion that Adam and Eve were supposed to have. So now not only do we receive the blessing, we can command the blessing. That was for me. I'm just trying to stay calm. I'm just trying to stay calm because that's the Holy Ghost. Because with Abraham, we can only say, Father, I receive. But because of dominion, you say, blessing, I call you into being. And because I'm a priest, I can say, Father, the blessing now, it attaches itself to Pastor Michael's life. Father, the blessing attaches itself to Sister Denise's life. The blessing attaches itself to Sister Linda's life. The blessing attaches itself to Sister Stephanie's life. The blessing attaches itself to Sister Frederica. What's your name, young man? Jeffrey. The blessing attaches itself to Brother Jeffrey's life. The blessing attaches itself to Sister Linda's life. The blessing attaches itself to Brother Courtney's life. The blessing attaches itself to Brother um, Thurman's life. Now we can actually decree the blessing. Woo. That's the power of a king and a priest. A priest can hear the blessing, but the king can decree it. <sighs> priest can operate. Priest, no matter what a priest did in the land, they had to go to the king like king. Now, the king understood who the priest was. He understood that the priests were hearing from God, but the, the priest couldn't, he couldn't send armies. He couldn't do all of that because he needed a decree from the king. But Jesus says, I'm making you king and priest. You can hear from me and decree it and it will happen. Because I have stepped my authority on you. You now have dominion. Plus, then the blessings just keep coming. He said the blessings will overtake you. That's why he says, so you know what you spend most of your time doing? Just blessed people. Your blessings will just overtake you. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, take no thought. Take no thought. I'll take care of you if you take care of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Galatians 3 and 8. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaim the good news of the Savior. I love God. How did he time this on Easter? Because he is so smart on Resurrection Sunday. Galatians 3 and 8. The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, proclaim the good news of the Savior to Abraham in advance with this promise, saying, in you shall all the nations be blessed. Because now, you know why the Jews are having a problem? Because the law no longer works for them. Because no, no, the law is no longer needed. But they refuse to give up their tradition. And they hate the fact that they are not the only ones who are heir to the kingdom now. And this is really what they hate. They can't get it by birth. They have to get it by faith now. Jesus says, I come for the Jews first. I'm here for the Jews. But if they don't accept me, that's fine. Then the nations will come in. That's all them stories. You know, like the table, they, you know, the, the, the man prepares the table for the wedding guest and all of that. And the people don't show up. He says, well, listen, go get them. He said, go out into the highways and byways to invite them to the table. If, if my invited guests won't come, that's fine. Go find anybody who want to eat and bring them to the table. So God says, listen, I'm, I'm sending my son for you because of Abraham. But guess what? My son got enough power in him that he can redeem the world back to me. 
And I don't care about, now I respect your relationship with Abraham, but that's not going to get you into heaven. That's not going to get you into my kingdom. The only way now that anybody comes into my kingdom is through my son. I don't care what your relation is to Abraham. Abraham would have loved the day that if he could have seen Jesus come to this earth, but he accepted it by faith. And guess what? <laughs> when Jesus gets up on the third day, guess who gets up with him? Abraham. Can you imagine him walking across that gulf? Because he has all power. And he looks at Abraham and Moses. He looks at Isaac. He looks at all of those and says, you know what? Let's go. I'm proud of you. I saw you when you were going through all of that. You have done your job well. And I'm here to honor my father's promise with you. You are now redeemed from this place. So they left paradise and they went into the kingdom of heaven and they were able to walk around on the earth. Hallelujah. Because of the promise that God gave to Abraham. Hallelujah. So, yeah, we get it. I didn't know I was going to be teaching about the resurrection, but this is what it's all about. Galatians 3 and 9. So then those who are people of faith, whether Jew or Gentile, are blessed and favored by God and declared free of the guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with him along with Abraham the believer he didn't say Jesus he said Abraham y'all do you know what it takes at 90 years old for you to believe that God you can make me a father of many nations do you know what it takes if I told, if I told Mike, Mike, I just need you to leave everything. I need you to leave your job. I need you to leave everything. And I just need you to start driving towards California. And I tell you when to stop. <laughs> now you got saying this in tour, but you know, you leaving mom, leaving everybody else behind. Just gotta hit the gas pedal and go eat west. Yeah. See, no, we can think about Abraham, but somebody told you to leave out your house. Leave your job, leave your insurance, leave everything that you know, and just start driving. We'll be like, oh, man, God, where am I going? God, where am I? God, what is, wait a minute, hold it. Wait a minute. Abraham literally left everything because God says, go to a land I'm going to show you, son. Hallelujah. And even though he took Lot, <laughs> Jesus Christ, we ain't getting into that story. But he honored the fact that he was willing to go on the word go. Leave it, son. Just leave all this stuff. I'll make you great and I'll increase you. And then I'll bless your seed and you are Abraham's seed. Hallelujah. Y'all love God tonight. Woo! Don't y'all love the word? <laughs> <Another word. laughs> oh, Pastor Mike, it's humbling, brother. It's humbling to be able to talk about God's word. Um, it's humbling. It's not, it is, it's a humbling thing for God allowed me to stand in front of you and talk about what he wrote. Because that's a lot of, that's a lot of responsibility. Because I can't factor myself into it. I can't factor what I what I think into it. I got to be like, God, let me hear from you. Because this stuff we're talking, this is critical, y'all. This is critical. And whatever I say is got to be based in this word, these words up here. If I ever stand up, unless this thing is not working, and it will work every time I turn it on in Jesus' name. We need to buy a second one. I hear your Holy Spirit. All right, we got to buy a second one. Because I always want you pointed here. You can, you can hear me talking, but your eyes stay locked on this word because these words will never fail you. Even if something happens with me, if I go left or whatever, this right here keeps you straight. It keeps us all straight, as a matter of fact, in Jesus' name. So praise God. Thank you so much. I'm not going to hold you. Glory to God. And, but I do want to make sure that we do give um, these faith, these people out here that are full of faith and don't know him yet. They need their faith activated. Hallelujah. And you activate, everybody's full of faith, but I want your faith to be activated. And you activate it simply by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's it. You're so full of God right now, you just don't know it because Jesus activates all of the God on the inside of you. 
So let's activate the God on the inside of you right now. All that faith needs is looking for you just to say a couple of sentences. And once you do that, it will activate the power of God that's already locked in the side of you. It will open up that power and give you total relationship, total guidance from God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So if you repeat these two phrases, then you will know that you are con totally connected forever to Yahweh, to God himself. Hallelujah. So can you just repeat this after me if you're listening? Uh, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and coming into my life and saving me now, tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen. Done. Hallelujah. That's it. Done. You are in the kingdom. That old power is in you. You might say, well, well, pastor, what do I do now? Hallelujah. Well, I always say this. Go, go. And if you got the Bible, if you got the Bible app, download the Bible app, the Holy Bible, hopefully the King James Version. If you got a phone, if you don't have a Bible, look for the King James Version, because I trust that there's some other things out there. But I want you to read John chapter three. Or if you got a Bible that's been hanging around, go read John chapter three. Read the whole chapter. Read it three times for me. OK, do that. Um, now, what I'm praying for you is that God will show you the house that you need to go to, the church you need to go to that, that you can get taught. Now, until you find that, please just tune in. We're here on Sunday mornings at 10. Um, we're here. Um, we are, we are, um, you know, we're online. Um, and if you, you know, if you, you're friends with any of us, you'll probably see me. That's how, if you're on the radio, we're on, on seven at seven o'clock at night on Thursdays and we're on 10 o'clock in the mornings on Sundays. And listen, I'm telling you until you find where God is sending you. I just want to make sure that you're getting at least your foundation right. OK, that's what I'm concerned about. So you can just listen in until God reveals to you where you're supposed to go in Jesus name. All right. I think we're good on um, this Sunday. We will be having um, Easter service, resurrection service. Glory to God. We'll be having um, a great play. Hallelujah. Man, I got to put this cross back up. I laid the cross down. I felt like, oh, my God, let's put the cross back up. It felt like, well, you can't lay down the cross. Anyway, we'll be having um, a great play. Um, uh, Minister Hope Wright and the other people have uh, put together this great play. Um, then we're going to have the seven last sayings. We also have communion. Mike, how you say that? We're going to start at 10. What was that? Thing? 10 to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so. Hallelujah, but I don't think it's gonna be that. We we we're not gonna to try to keep you all day, but uh, yeah. But I, you know, please, if you don't have anywhere to go, if you're not getting out, just tune in. Uh, you can come here uh, right now. Masks are optional. Uh, we're still hanging around 40, but we'll we'll allow more people in. I think uh, we're not gonna really cut that back on this Sunday because I know people are visiting, families are visiting. So uh, my doors are open. We start at 10 o'clock on Sunday. If you can't get here, we're on the radio until 10:30, and we're also on uh, YouTube and Facebook, LinkedIn, and all of that stuff. So um, please just join us. But let me tell you something: that if you have a house, if you have a pastor. And if you're not visiting, man, go, go, go support your church, man. Go support your leader. Hallelujah. They've been toiling all week or whatever. I never like to pull. I don't ever like to say that, you know, come here. Not if you got some a house to go to. Hallelujah. And this is the first Sunday that, you know, some people are getting to spend Easter together back in, in the house. So hallelujah. So please, no, I'm not asking for you to leave where you are. Hallelujah. But if you don't have somewhere to go, um, the doors are open in Jesus name. Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to turn this over to um, Sister Linda. Hallelujah. Um, De um, Deacon Hodge. If she has a mic, I don't know if she has a mic. Uh, it's one back in my office, Freddie, if uh, if she doesn't have one in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Well, I'll come back. I can just come back to you since I'll let you talk to my hallelujah. I sent Freddie out. Testing, testing, <laughs> so testing. I don't want to do all that effort, then I start this anyway. Oh, there she go. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Spirit loves everybody. So it's like, just wait. Testing, testing. Number six. Number six, 22 to 27. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, 
speaking to Aaron unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put thy name upon the children of Israel, and I shall bless them. The word of the Lord. <laughs> 